now your, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Mustafa. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm very happy to be speaking with all of you on the hopes that we meet in person, like again, inshallah, very soon. Uh, I'm also very happy uh, to be partner with uh, my dear friend Mustafa Hafizoglu in Advisors Turkey. So having said that, let us move into the question. So the CEO asks the PMO director or manager, should I keep your PMO in my budget ne next year? And the answer is yes or no. No, don't keep it. Let's just close the PMO and look for something else. Easy. Or yes, keep the PMO. The best is yet to come. But here we have to prove it. So let's start to probe the first answer. If What are the reasons to drop the PMO? Maybe the PMO is not providing value to the organization. Projects are still late, over budget. Uh, client is not that much satisfied. We have lots of quality issues. Uh, uh, contractors' claims are, are high instead of uh, reaching to a point where we have low or no claims at all. Um, we have several digital transformations, cultural transformations, but they are not succeeding. Coordination, collaboration, very low. Lots of silo, which is my specialty to break the silo. Uh, lots of silos, each one working alone as an empire. Uh, reports are cosmetic. We, uh, we tell you what you like to hear, not what is going on. No cost saving, no optimization on, on, on resources. We are still paying for our own expenses more than our peers and hardly any contribution to organizational objectives being met. So if you have all these symptoms why in the world would the CEO pay to keep the PMO? So here, it's easy, simple truth. You don't have to prove these problems. People can see them. And the, they will justify dropping the PMO. And by dropping the PMO, we make an achievement. We spare the money, the budget of the PMO, to do with it something else beneficial for the organization. Now, is this something we want to do, I believe those with us on the group, their answer is no. Let us keep the PMO. And by the way, you know this question, many CEOs, when they started to hear it, huh, interesting question, and they started to smile because it's, it, it, it goes in their mind from time to time. And there is a very big, big dangerous thing. Did you ever find a CEO who thinks about dropping down or closing their financial department or their IT or services or customer services or technical engineering, sales, business development strategy. No, why? They say, how can we live without them? Then why do they think or even consider uh, uh, closing without the PMO? Simply they don't understand or see the value. So our main job is to highlight the value of the PMO. So let us see what we can do in this perspective. Let's go back to the basics and answer these three most important questions here. Why, what, and how? Why do we need the PMO? What makes the PMO a winning PMO? And how do PMOs succeed? So I'm gonna start quickly with some of the research published earlier by DCG and, and PMI speaking about how PMOs can deliver uh, organizational value. To reach this point, you have to, to be close to business leaders to engage them. And to do that, you don't need to do everything or to succeed on everything. You have to think of the Pareto rule, 80-20 rule. Focus on the critical initiatives and give all your effort in making them successful because they make a difference in the organization. And when you talk about processes, don't complicate things, simplify. Simple is better. Simple is an invitation for people to join in. Complication, we already have a lot of that. We cannot afford to have more. And focus on training people, on bringing on talent, enhancing capabilities, because people always, almost always, they are afraid of what they don't know. But when they learn, they collaborate and they become part of your 
initiative or group, and of course, encourage a culture of change. It's all about change, cultural change, digitalization, and so on. Another uh, study speaks about the PMOs, how they should produce successful business outcomes, outcomes, results, okay? So to do that, you have to be near the sea level. You have to uh, be part of the strategic planning team, enhance core competencies of project management. And when we say project management in this context here, it's not just about managing projects. It's about the project-driven discipline. And this includes portfolio. Uh, this includes strategy implementation and realization, program management, managing benefits, managing projects successfully, establishing, maintaining the PMO, the governance and operating model for all of this to happen, even risk, risk management and organizational project maturity. All these are considered part of the project-driven discipline. This is what we have to look for and embrace. And we need to use consistency. Consistency is important as much as possible when it is applicable. And the, the, the last part I need to share before we actually start, also what are the competencies of the successful PMOs within a study by PMI? They have three things. They spread organization culture of project management important. Why? Because again, many people, especially upstairs, do not still understand the value of project management. And they think project management is something technical. Let engineering have, handle that or, 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 or technical part. Well, it is not. It is a discipline in management to manage the realization of the strategy. So it happens at multiple levels. A lot of things we need to spread. And continually evaluate PMO performance. In one of the government projects in the GCC, they gave us nine out of 10 when an external committee came and assessed our work. And I asked about the missing point and they said, you did not show evidence that you are actually evaluating your own self. I said, stop, we do. And we showed them the dashboard, which includes our evaluation day in, day out from the moment we started. They said, why didn't you show us this? I said, nobody asked about it before. We do it for our own self. And you know, what you cannot measure, you cannot improve. How many of our PMOs measure their own performance? Keep this in mind. And of course, evolve, improve through knowledge management and change management. And this increases the value. Now, if we can start with the first poll, we're gonna have lots of polls. This poll has only one question. And I'd like you to answer, of course, all the answers are for ourselves. What we are going to do, we're gonna have lots of questions engaged all through the session. We need to work together quickly, please. Okay, in order to, 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 to fin finish all, consider this like assessing your own self. Okay, and uh, at the end, we're gonna share with you the tool to do self-assessment. So five answers, who's my mama? I don't know anything about it. Vague, okay, we are right, we are in the right direction. No, no, it's clear or it's crystal clear, cannot be better. So uh, if we are there, uh, let's wait for, we, we cannot give a lot of time because you know, this is the first poll. We have 18 polls. Wow. Can we meet it within our, can we conclude our session with all the polls? Yes, we can, but we have to work quickly. Okay. So this is why I'd love to wait for all the 47 to answer best in five seconds. Mustafa, if we can close and show the, the result, I'd appreciate it so that we can uh, have time to do all the rest. And I encourage everybody Please, whenever you see a poll, answer it immediately. This is part of our uh, session. Okay, okay, almost almost half uh, has answered. Yeah. Okay. So if you can show the results, please. Okay. So we have one, who's my mama? 16% vague and 12% right, 44% clear, 24% crystal clear. This is interesting. Now, after the session, you're gonna take the tool with you. And on Monday, I would like you to do the exercise with your colleagues, each one alone. 
and then do the statistics and see how you assess yourselves. This is only for you. Nobody's judging anybody. There is no right or wrong answer. And most of the questions we are going to present today, it's about having clarity of why we exist. So this is the first question. Thank you very much. Let's move on. And uh, moving on. Okay, why PMO? In order to understand why we need the PMO, we need to focus on the role of the PMO. Why does the PMO exist? What should it do? And to do that, there are actually multiple dimensions. The first three most, most important. Will the PMO be directing projects or controlling? We're gonna speak about each one. And I'm gonna ask you to be involved on each one as well. Will it work, be working to transform the organization or sustain what we have? And is the PMO a permanent PMO which closes after two or three years, or is it a PMO that will stay with us for years to come or as long as we have the organization? And to start to speak about it, there are many, many types of, and I call them structures of organizational excellence. Guess why? They are not all called PMOs. So start with a strategic management office. There are many types of SMO. Some of them uh, devise or craft the strategy of the organization, perhaps with the help, help of one of the international management consulting firms or on, the, on their own, they use balance scorecards and, and other tools, but also the strategic management office, our friend Antonio Nieto Rodriguez moved it into a strategy implementation office, which not only focuses on the crafting, but also focuses on implementing the plan to deliver, to deliver through both, both operations and projects. We can speak a lot about this thing, but the second type is the transformational program management office. And you realize transformation is great. Why? You do not transform forever. You establish a program to do a specific transformation. Once you realize, realize the benefits and the operations actually embrace these benefits and they become part of their standard operating procedure and they work on a better level, then the program is over. But very likely you're gonna have other multiple programs come, come, coming up, each for a specific purpose. This is why it is a temporary, whereas strategic is a permanent office. Now, in, in, in some of the uh, uh, visions for companies around, we have something called vision realization office, which is important to realize the vision of the whole nation. And this includes both the transformation and the strategy combined in one office, but it has a rather complex structure in its operating model, which we're gonna speak about operating models in a bit. Then we have the corporate project management office, and uh, near it, we have the Enterprise uh, Project Management Office. The main difference is that when you talk about enterprise, it's more into portfolio management. It's more into managing the strategy implementation, for example. Whereas when you talk about corporate, this is where we manage multiple contracts, multiple projects, internal or, or extensions, multiple vendors, the relationship with the resources, the functional business, business units and what not. This is where we do, uh, where we walk the talk, okay? The planning or realization of the strategy is done at the enterprise level and the actual implementation here at the corporate. And when we go to individual projects, especially giga or mega projects, many of them, especially in the oil and gas industry, in the capital infrastructure project, in huge projects, we have a project management and control office for every project which is set on, on site. So the way this operates, if you want to visualize with me, a large organization, they might have a strategic management office for the strategy. They might have some transformational programs. They might have one corporate or enterprise office and maybe several PMCs or project management and control offices. And within the operating model and governance structure, we manage how they speak to each other. Then we have the integrated between PMC and PMO. This is an innovation we did for a huge, huge organization 
public organization where they had to, to speak both lang languages, technical with engineering and strategy with vision uh, people. Then we might have a departmental demo, and we find lots of these for IT department, especially because they have lots of lots of uh, uh, projects. Okay, and we see it's focused focus on 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 sustainability uh, uh, mostly. Then we might have a public private partnership, which is a long term. Yes, this is gray, but it is gray for a long period of time. It's almost like blue because PPPs. They have a contract of like 20, 25 years. They start the five years of setup, and then they establish an operation and they run it for like 15 years. So usually PPPs start with a program and end with, with sustainable op operation. Then there are th three concepts which, which are still being uh, like uh, uh, thinked up, like the capacity development office, the knowledge management office, with Knowledge Management Institute, the Innovation Management Office about business development and innovation, and Vision Realization as a program for Vision Realization Office. Now, are these all the structures that can, can, can occur? No, absolutely not. But these, are, these come from much of the work we did in advisors in many, many locations. And we start we, we started to spot the, the differences and wanted to highlight them because it helps a lot explain who we are, what's our role, why we exist. And the first fallacy from my personal why they exist. I'm a consultant, and many consultants are required to help organizations establish a PMO. They say, yes, let's write a process, a methodology book or a playbook. Let's implement a software, give you training, roll it with, and go home. Wrong. Okay. Do processes for which purpose? You're going to see. What about the operating model? What about the why? You cannot start without answering the why. And this is a question that should stay in the mind of the PMO manager or director and management and top management. This is not a question that anybody can answer alone on his own self. Now, we, if we can start most of these, the call two, and this includes six questions. Uh, so I'm gonna speak about each one. So please uh, let's take, take around uh, sort of a minute or two, no more, to answer the six, six questions. And I urge everybody to answer. Again, no right or wrong, your PMO, uh, is it a directing PMO that focuses on uh, portfolio management, for example, strategy realization, implementation, and so on? Or is it controlling, making sure that projects are uh, conducted successfully? Or is it both or something else? Now, there is a trick here. And the trick is that, do you believe we can have one single office to do both. Many people answer both. You might answer that. And if you want to answer that, and if this is the case in your organization, I'll tell you how you can do it right. You can do it right by having both, if you need to have it as both, to have two different subunits, the controlling reports to the director. Why? Directing means speaking to, to sea level. Directing means looking at feasibility, early phases of a project, assessing whether or not to invest in this direction or not, looking at KPIs, uh, looking at alignment to strategy, measuring how much of the strategy we, we, we did. And all of these, including looking at the capabilities we have or we can have or access to and resources and look how to distribute them in the manner that provides maximum value to the organization. This is a different game, different play, different conditions, different everything, different stakeholders from controlling contracts or individual projects, working with vendors, working with technical teams, working with clients and beneficiaries, working with internal teams, and, and so on. So these are two different things. If you want to have them both, I cannot tell you you are wrong, but again, make sure there are two units, one unit reports to the other. 
Each does its own work. We don't want anybody to step on the foot of anyone else. And here, I'll tell you, your uh, operating model will be a little bit complex. We're going to speak about this in, 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 in a bit. So the second question, I guess you are answering the questions. The second question, okay, I'm going to the third, sorry. Uh, second dimension, okay, is it transforming or sustaining or both or other? So if it is uh, uh, sustaining, now, now uh, uh, one thing about uh, answering things again, um, I, we want to produce a, a, a report at the end and share with you about the data, what, what, what you answered. And it's all anonymous, okay, but it helps us, why? Because maybe this is the first time somebody does this research or data on Turkish organizations, which is important because it helps all of us understand how to manage better or, or establish uh, a more successful PMOs. So is it transforming to transform or sustain? We need both, of course we need both. But what do you sustain? Your existing status or status to be you know, the goal? status to be, where you want to be. So you improve, then you sustain. And you only sustain for a small period of time because then you think about the next transformation or next improvement, okay? And who does the sustaining? Is it the PMO or the operation? Ah, good thing to think, think thoroughly about this point, okay? I believe projects that, are, that move and change and are temporary, they are good to transform, but operations, which is more permanent, they benefit from the transformation of the various projects and they can provide this sustainability. Then the third question, okay, here in, in, in this poll is about, uh, okay, okay. Is it temporarily permanent both or other? If it is a project, it's always temporary. If it is a program, it's temporary, but long-term temporary. If it's strategic nature, then it is permanent. So again, no right or wrong answer. It depends a lot on the context, what you wish to achieve. The whole idea about, about this assessment and these questions is to get you to think about your own PMO from your own context and the perspective of what you wish, you wish to achieve within your organization. Now, a fourth dimension, are our projects based on contracts or are they internal? Aha, internal transformation projects, we are establishing a new ERP, we are enhancing our CRM application, uh, we are opening uh, a new branch for our uh, 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 business, uh, we are expanding our, our factories, we are uh, lots of internal transformation projects, even, even programs long term. Who's the client? We are our own client, meaning we upgrade the operations so that they can deliver our clients better. Whereas the first one, project based on contract, it's like a contractor, whether you are an IT company or a construction company. You have clients, and this is how you make your, 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 your revenue, through uh, delivering what is in the contract, and each contract is a, a project. Or it could be a PPP, which is a joint venture, okay? Again, external has both transformation and it has a contract. It could be all of these, or even something else, it depends. Now, these questions are important, why? The answer to these questions will enable you to build the right operating model and governance structure for your PMO. The more you include things, the more complex it is. Doable, everything is doable, but everything comes at a certain uh, effort and cost. And the last dimension we speak about here, is it about business development projects to increase demand or project execution? demand and supply. Like I work in the agribusiness and they had a project unit and the project unit, PMO office manages the various execution for their uh, sugar plants and water and, and whatnot in, in the agribusiness in, in Africa. But now business development or sales, they said, no, we like the project driven discipline and we will consider our 
uh, seeking our uh, efforts to get new business, each one as a project or a program, establishing a new office in a new country, making a promotion. All these are projects and we can uh, think and design them as projects and their success is to get us new business. Again, is it business development? Is it execution? Both or other. And to have a quick look at, at the, the results here, uh, sharing the results. Okay, we have uh, both 64% uh, in the role. Then we have in the first one, uh, and uh, directing and controlling, meaning guys, you're gonna have two units. Uh, in the uh, the second one, both in terms of transforming and sustaining, you're gonna have to do a lot of work in integrated with operations. And the uh, permanent, okay, this depends on the type of structure. Uh, the one about uh, contracts or internal, nothing about PPP, but uh, okay, we, ha we have all, more than half all, which includes uh, PPP as well. And the last one, okay, both. Okay, we want uh, projects to get business and we want projects to realize the, the business. Very interesting. Thank you very much. Let's move on to a second concept. Okay. Uh, and another Paul as well. Now, I would like you to tell me about your PMO type, okay? Which type of PMO are you talking about? Is it a strategic management office? Is it, is it transformational office? Is it a vision realization enterprise PMO? Uh, is the poll on? Please, Mustafa, if it's on, the poll number three, which is only one question, by the way. Is it a corporate PMO project controls office? program management office, departmental, or something else? If you can answer this quickly, so that we can move to the second part and start to answer the question, what? Okay, because let me look at my time. Oh my God, only we have only 20 minutes. We have to move on uh, uh, quickly. So, let's, wait, let's wait five more seconds and then I will. Okay, okay, I'm all yours, okay. Again, uh, no right or wrong. And what I, from my perspective, the larger the organization, you're gonna have more than one of these, okay? And the interesting thing is how do we manage the relationship between all of these, especially for example, in the, let's say uh, oil and gas business or in the defense and, and uh, uh, aeronautics uh, uh, industry, definitely we're gonna have more than one of these and to, to write the right operating model for each one and how they work with each other is something that requires furthermore uh, work. So we look and we see we have the majority is a corporate PMO, then both program management and project control office, then department, we have one transformation office. And there is something else other, of course other. These, these are not all the ones that exist in, in the world, okay? Because if you wanna list everything that exists, it becomes a PhD research. Now, the what? When you want to speak about the what in terms of, of, of PMOs, let's think about three, three important topics, governance, functions, and services. Governance, again, I said it several times, operating model. And before that, the mandate, the business case. This is how we earn the trust of the C level. Okay, think about all the questions we are trying to do and the assessment that I'm gonna give you and the templates you're gonna share with, with all of you to help you build the business case, help you become in line, in alignment with what the C-level want, with what the CEO want, with what helps the strategy of the organization. This is the role of the business case. It's very important. And if you don't have it, start to write one, even if you have, a PMO which has been existing for years, okay? Because when you start to ask these questions and rebuild or, or write a new business case for you, it gives you clarity and more alignment and success will come afterwards. Then based on all the questions and these two come, we build the operating model, the governance structure, who can do what, when, okay? How uh, the, 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 uh, the authority, the delegation, 
who can make decisions on higher and higher on spending money, on, on, on changes, on risks? When, when do we do the escalation? Okay, how do we manage changes and so on? Everything is put in the operating model. So all our, our processes, governance are, are there. Then of course, part of that is KPIs and reporting. Why? Because when you speak whether to client or top management, they don't tell you, show me your operating model. They ask for results and they receive them in reports and in KPIs. So this is the first thing we have to take care of. The second thing is the standard functions. What about the processes? How can we simplify them? How can, can we focus on the ones that we need most? Knowledge management and last uh, session, there was a spe specific session about knowledge management, big topic. How do you utilize technology to serve our projects and our PMO? And of course, competency. Focusing on enhancing the competencies of our people. Yeah, these are standard almost every PMO. Now, the services, which is very important. I wrote an article like a couple of months ago, which is about the PMO manager says, I don't want to help you go seek help from someone else. When a project manager knocks his door and says, listen, I have my project is in trouble. If your PMO, and this structure is not for a portfolio management. This is for more like a controlling PMO. There are other changes that go for the other side, which I have a slide for it at the end. So in this type of structure, if the project manager comes and asks for help and you them, it's not my role to help you. I give training. I write processes. I will teach you on, on, on the software. Then you go. I'm not responsible for project success. Then please close down and spare the money. Your main objective, if you are a corporate PMO, is to make sure projects succeed. And projects are managed by project managers. So why not think like we do in the telco business, for example, and we have this service level agreement. Think of yourself as a service provider. So you have to provide these services for every project or at least for projects that will ask for them. If we don't have our own resources, not a problem. Let's connect with the resources who can do this or provide these services, whether from the own, inside the organization or outside. Initiation is paramount. Every project that fails had almost had origins in initiation. Initiation problems cannot be fixated by optimization later. They, they, they go on with your whole life cycle. So it is important to help initiate projects, especially one thing, how many projects started without a project manager? Then later on, they assign one. So the organization initiates things even before a project manager is there. So who's there to make sure the right process is followed and the right best practices are made and to bring actual experience. This is the manifestation of knowledge management from people who know how to initiate these types of projects properly and help us. The same can be said on planning, on controlling. Of course, on managing trouble projects, every PMO, Every organization in the world has trouble projects, and this is where they need our help most. So either we have a team or we have a team that we can hire based on emergency or allocate or reallocate. This is vital. And the last thing, my friend Antonio, the other day made a very interesting uh, article about commissioning, how bad closure can cause you to lose everything you've been working for for years. So proper commissioning. I'm going to speak a bit about commissioning later on. So these are the, the what, what we will do. First, why we have the office, then what we will do. And let us embark on, on this, on the third hall, please. Uh, Mustafa, if you can turn it on. Yes, the operating model. Now, I want you to look at me very quickly because the answers are the same. Do we have, if we don't have an operating model, not started. If we have it, but not very formal, partially defined. No, we have a document and it's agreeable and defined, it's three. We have an operating model and it is being implemented and people follow it, it's four. Efficient and sustained, you can dare to say efficient and sustained, if all your projects are succeeding, 
every time from the first time. We like to say we are the best. But if you are the best, you do something. Can you become better? It's hard. It, it will become the Toyota way, you see? They are never happy with whatever they have. They always seek to become better. But how many Toyotas do we have in the world? See? So this is why it, it is important to be honest with ourselves. Again, nobody judges anybody here. I'm going to give you the, the, this tool. You do the self-assessment. Focus on your weaknesses. This is the first step to become better. Now, operating model, uh, this alone requires a session, OK? And, this, this, and, and, and it will be a different thing from one organization to different. Number two, again, performance management and KPI. We don't use any KPIs. We do not measure the performance. And here, listen, I'm not speaking about the performance of projects. I'm speaking about, are you measuring the PMO performance? OK? This is vital. No, we did not start. Actually defined, defined, implemented, efficient, and sustainable. Wow. Which is the highest level in terms of performance management and KPIs. And the third question here is uh, about maturity, okay? About the maturity uh, uh, of the processes we have. And how do, do we know if we have maturity or not? You know, PMI has the OPM3 model, which they stop the, the certification, but actually the, uh, uh, the standard still exists. IPMA, they have a, a, a working model still there. Uh, Exodus have another one model. Irrespective of any of these, what do we mean by a mature process? You can take 100 over 100. Adi, uh, you have yeah. 10 minutes left. Okay, okay, I'm going to work quickly now. So even if you, if you have a full score on your process maturity, if you don't find the results on the ground, they're not mature. It's only, it's only you are sugarcoating the, 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 the results. Then uh, the, the question that comes after that, um, okay, which is about knowledge management. And we spoke about knowledge management last time, very important topic yet. Not too many companies are addressing it properly. And then we speak about the utilization of technology and project management information systems. Very important, very vital, especially if you have a distributed team, if you have multiple locations, if you have large amount, large number of, of stakeholders, lots of projects, then it becomes a necessity to have uh, a tool whereby we can see and, and record all of our results. And number six, of course, competency. What are we doing? It's not our job, it's the job of HR or learning development. Absolutely not. It's always your job. Learning and development officers and HR officers, what do they do? They react with the functional business units that request programs to enhance the competencies of their own people. So the design comes from here. Yes, implementation, they can help us to use their standards there. And let's just look uh, quickly. So we have in, in terms of operating model, 25% is perfect, 25% is middle, partially defined 25, 17 not started, and performance partially defined is the majority, and implemented 33%, okay? You see, every question that you do not answer as perfect, you know what is this? This is an opportunity to improve, to become better. This is how, how we can become, become better, okay? And then we have the uh, third one, maturity almost in the middle, okay? And knowledge management also similar to, to that one, technology uh, also mostly in the defined and competency management more like better than worse, but we have majority in partially defined or, or defined. Meaning lots of room, to do improvements, okay? So let's move on with the last part of our, our session. Uh, okay, now uh, the last uh, polls, which is about, again, 
Uh, what I'm, uh, I, I don't think we, we might have enough time to do these, but they are important. Uh, let's not start the poll, the last poll, uh, only the last question, we do it later on. Uh, it's about the services, which I spoke about. Do you have initiation services in your organization? Do you have planning services in your organization? Do you have control services in your PMO organization, I mean? Do we have something to help projects in trouble, okay? A team, a process to help them uh, 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 go back on track? And last, commissioning, which is a very important thing. Now, those who, who operate in um, oil and gas and in, in, uh, in uh, some, some large utilities or uh, defense understand very well what commissioning means, which means once you deliver, do you give them the product and go away? No. You have to prepare the people. You have to prepare the standard operating procedure manual. You have to provide training for them. You have to do testing. You have to do testing with them. You have to make sure they understand how to operate this facility. Okay. And after you deliver, you, you might stay for some time to do some, some snag lists or, or, or logs and, 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 and so on. So commissioning is a major component on Giga projects. Now, the last question, how do PMOs succeed? Well, how to establish the PMO? We have our organizational agile organization development framework, whereby we do, we always start with an assessment and gap analysis. We understand where we are today, what we have. If you have best practices, we cannot capitalize on them. It's not about format C, forget everything and start from scratch. This is totally wrong. On the contrary, understand what capabilities we have, let's preserve them, and what weaknesses we have or missing items, this is where we work on them. And the hardest part, what are the things we are doing which we should not do? This requires a cultural change. This is why we have many tools to do the assessment and gap analysis. And after we understand we want to go where we are, what is the gap, what's the roadmap, including probably having the business case, which is part here of our PMO and how to improve it, you start with the operating model, which is about organizational governance, management framework, how you integrate it, who, who does what. And after you do these two critical components, you start to work on process, tools, training, and rollout at the end. The problem I have with many, they don't start with one and two. We need something quick. Let's start with three, strong. You will never finish, you never achieve something of value. You have to start with the assessment, with understanding of your strengths and weaknesses, build the right operating model, then everything will follow. And it's not, not something, yeah, we're gonna do assessment for six months, then uh, uh, operating model for another six months. No, 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 okay? You do these two fairly quickly, maybe two or three months maximum, and you start to enhance all of the others and they overlap. This is how we, we achieve the PMO in an agile manner because we are focused on attaining and getting results. Now, another, this requires on its own another full uh, uh, lecture or, or, or seminar. Uh, so the last poll, supposing you wrote your business case or value proposition, did you apply it? Did you uh, 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 present it to the CEO, to the board of directors, to the sponsor, all or none? It is important. Did they approve it? <clears throat> Do you have their signature on it? Okay. This is important. Now, to whom should we present it? I don't know. You only know. Or you can know after you do your homework, your research on your own context and organization. It's highly contextual. There is no right answer, okay? But make sure the people in charge exactly know what you will do and what you will not do, and they approve it. Because if this is the case, they will support you. If not, they will not support you. And to do the, the, the closing, uh, so uh, some of you said the sponsor, all, okay? and Board of Directors, CEO, thank you. And then let's go to the uh, last component of our uh, closing, actually, because we almost finished. So we spoke about why we need the PMO, 
and we spoke about uh, what comprises the components of a winning PMO. And we spoke about how the PMO succeed and the PMO self-assessment. We're gonna receive these documents from Mustafa after uh, our session today or tomorrow or, or Monday. And you can do the self-assessment on your own. Try to do it by more than one person anonymously and check the, the result. And then this will help you develop a better business case. Now, is this enough? This is step like PMO 101. After we have the basics, now we, we should later on, we should look at the portfolio of investment and initiative. The strategy implementation and their intersection provides the alignment, transformation, optimization. The portfolio and the benefit realization and result-oriented management and their intersection helps us in building the business case and coming up with investment appraisal for every single project or investment in the organization. And the intersection of benefit and strategy help us focus on operational excellence and sustainability. Why? Because this is the role of operations which we have. And you realize for each one of these, we have a different framework, a different model. Each one requires an independent session. Even what's next? Each PMO, think of it as a cultural transformation, whether digital or not. Think about PMO relationship with strategy, but think a lot about its relationship with operation. Why? Ultimately, it's all about operation. It's never about projects. We are in project management to serve operation. We have to change our minds. And the relationship between multiple PMOs, and we spoke about uh, some of these uh, here. So uh, by this, I finish my session. I'm very happy we now have a, a tr.advisors.org, okay, which has a, a, a Advisors Turkey website. And uh, a, a bit about us, we are an approved vendor for multiple international organizations. Hopefully more, more will come from, from Turkey. And we have an ecosystem. We exist in several countries, uh, main, mainly in the MENA region, uh, tens of knowledge partners and channel partners, and uh, hundreds of uh, like followers who attend our free sessions from around 80 countries in the world. And by that, I thank you for listening, bearing with me. And any questions, I don't think uh, we have time. It's exactly six. Uh, you are very on time. 